hi guys and welcome to my channel rebecca diamond paints i'm rebecca and i'm going to diamond paint <laughs> um my dog's trying to climb on the desk straight away uh so this kit is the same as last week so i haven't actually been able to make much progress on it so it's still the harry potter and the chamber of secrets but obviously if you're new to here i will still link the painting below so if you're interested in it you can always go and have a look at it yourself I'm still, I'm still using the same pen and a couple of minders from Diamond Art Club and I don't think there's anything new in terms of what I'm using to actually put together the painting. I've changed the angle of the camera slightly so you're kind of looking a bit more at the uh, area that I'm doing. Uh, you're looking at it from a different angle from me so I'm sitting this way so I'm seeing it from here to there and you're seeing it how it should be which is from there to there so yeah um so yeah um there might be some noise in the background my boyfriend is home so he is downstairs doing some stuff and the windows are open to let some air in so you might hear like cars and such and then obviously wolf is a bit of a noisy dog so yeah so update with the kit so i have actually ran out of pieces so all these number nines um in this area i've actually ran out of these so my plan is to finish the kit so i finish this section and finish the color blocking up here and then obviously just email diamond art club be like hey i'm missing a color could you send me out some replacements and i i just was like well i'm gonna finish it first i'm nearly there um, and that way I, I can tell if i have any more missing colors so yeah so number nine is missing sadly um so i'm just gonna crack on i guess with the ends there's not many left in this section so da -da -da -da. i'll get that but yeah um so updates what updates are in my life um so i've been at college all week so last week when i posted this video it was a wednesday that i made the video today is a friday because i didn't have any time on wednesday to make the video so i'm literally making this wednesday morning a friday morning sorry um so basically the end of last week i had my second day at workplace my work placement which is at a local fest to me which it's very enjoyable. I spent a lot of my time counting like medicine stock uh, because there was quite a few discrepancies. So they just wanted someone to just go through and confirm. And obviously I don't have any, like I'm, I don't really have a job, specific job there. I just do whatever they need me to do. So yeah, I did that. Um, I actually enjoyed it. I really, I'm really weird like that. I do enjoy those silly little things like that. Um, just counting and it was a bit of a mess the cupboard as well so as i was going through it shelf by shelf i tidied them up sorted out the medication by like dosage size and expiry dates and all that stuff so yeah it was actually quite nice to just sit and four four hours doing that it took a long time it took half of my day but it looks nice and even they commented that they like it was really well done and stuff so that was nice to get like that little praise so yeah um i have a random drill here i don't know shit i just dropped it i don't know where it come from though i don't know where it's gone i should find it soon i hope oh there's some ends there still but yeah so that was my friday uh did i do anything last thursday Oh yeah, Thursday I was obviously back at college, um, so posted this, recorded this Wednesday, went to college for Thursday, Friday. Thursday I had practical with the animals, so I think that week I actually was cleaning out the, doing a full, we say full clean, we're doing a partial clean on the harvest mice enclosure, we had to, you have to leave a bit of the previous substrate and such in there be and hides because they need their scent on it but we have so we have four harvest mice in there and we had to catch them first which took 
look at 30 40 minutes because they're so small and quick i think the hack we had eventually was every we chased them into this little tunnel they had well, not chased them but like kind of directed them into this tunnel and once they were in we picked up the tunnel held it over the little it's called a rub which is a really useful box that's all it stands for and it's what we use to basically handle animals they've got like little air holes cut and stuff and it's plastic and see-through so if we're doing a bit more of a dangerous animal we could do health checks with it safely um what was wrong? um my i'm just gonna open the door for wolf because the door is shut and he's blind <laughs> Yeah, so, um, we have, yeah, so they're called rubs, and we use them to hold on to small animals that are quite flighty, and he's back again. So we're just working on certain areas, and he's coming back upstairs now. What's up, baby? Oh, no, that's a cat. Okay, bye, now. Yeah, that's a cat. Um, so, yeah, they're called rubs, and, yeah. So we use them, like I said, we use them for the small little uh, animals like the mice and we'll probably use them for like hamsters just so that we can see them without having to interact with them too much because they are small, they are flighty and even <laughs> they do escape. We do have a loose mouse currently on the unit. I don't know if they've caught it, but when I went in yesterday, there was a loose mouse on the unit um, and we're trying to, we put some tubing down to try and capture him. So yeah, he has that's what we use those for and um so yeah we took the harvest mice put them in the rub with some substrate and just put them in the corner and they kind of just huddled up in their little pen and went back to sleep in the little rub and then we had to clean so this enclosure is actually quite high up so i just did more for the leg work like going to get this fresh substrate and cleaning the little enrichment stuff because i was too short to actually reach the bottom of the rub to get out the substrate and then clean it well so my friend did that the person i was working with wise i went and did all the other stuff so that they just had to like wash it and then put the stuff back in um so yeah and then during that session as well i did get to take out we have a dog on unit so our tutor has a pet dog um it's a mini map dalton it's very cute and he um they got him but when they got him they brought him to college as a puppy um because we do have a unit where we have to like, I think it's our vet nursing unit, which is later on in the this year, where we we have to health check dogs and stuff like that. So we do have some dogs that the tutors bring in, which they're familiar with. And I, I'm not, I keep because I'm talking, I can't focus at the same time. So I keep, and that's why I'm not doing anything. <laughs> um, so the teachers do have like some set dogs, like family dogs, so like the temper that temperaments are calm and stuff and they've been health checked to come in the college and they're they're safe and all that for us to work with and you can't see those colors i'm just putting on the edge but i'm just doing it over here and so he was basically as a puppy she wanted him to be comfortable in the college familiar with the students and stuff and so yeah and we see, we've seen him from a puppy obviously he was brought just before the school break and he's grown a lot over the summer and he is still adorable though so i got to take him out to the toilet during the session because obviously he's not allowed on the units with the animals because that would be distressing to the animals because he's uh potentially for some of them a predator um so he when he's on when we're having a lesson on the unit he has to stay in the office bless him but he's very well trained and he's very spoiled he's got his food and his toys and his treats and yeah so we took him to the i took him to the toilet and then had a little fuss with him and then took him back and carried on the lesson and that was that lesson uh, so that was cool and then the rest of it was just um like theory work i think the following lesson was theory um but yeah so that was good um practical it was good wanted to kind of get back in the swing of things and yeah so we also had to submit some the two animals that we want to work with for the year well till christmas for one of our it's called an exotic animal husbandry unit 
so we did practical animal husbandry last year which is just basically standard maintenance of some of the animals on the unit like health checks meal plans i don't know why every time i do these videos my nose feels really nasally um and so we did those and then what was it and then but this unit is basically about exotic animals so in terms of the unit exotic animal means a animal that's like not native to the country that you're studying in so obviously we're in the uk so as long as the animal is not native to the uk we are allowed to work with it for the unit so for this year so i put in a request i asked for one of the ball pythons oh sorry no exotic not native and i think it's an unusual pet so like snakes are reptiles wild that's it they're wild so they're not domesticated pets so na non-native and non-domesticated animals so obviously the royal pythons we have two of them and i have i'm going to be working with one of them and then we have some sugar gliders as well and i will be working with one of those as well which i've got to be careful with those sugar gliders because they are nocturnal and they are little buttheads um even if you're just poking your fingers in to see if they're alive they will they will go for you i think for the first time in my year of study at this college um that i saw them actually have be taken out of the enclosure for a health check recently um so yeah they're not very well handled but i think they are trying to handle some of the less handled animals more which i don't know if that sentence makes sense because obviously it is an educational institution and we do want these animals to be at least semi semi comfortable with human interaction um but yeah we are doing also a breeding and genetics unit this year so and one of those uh the module like examination board asks us to kind of have experience with putting together maybe like implementing a breeding plan so this year i think last year they did like harvest mice and fancy mice um which actually is beneficial because harvest mice are actually endangered because and it's really weird because when people think of mice they don't think oh yeah they're an endangered species but they are because obviously they are a lot they are prey to a lot of predators because of their small size. Sorry about that. I um, had an alarm going off and I forgot I had these alarms set. So I just turned that off and turned off all future alarms for today. So yeah, um, so... Harvest mice are actually endanger an endangered species in the UK. Um, I think a lot of this is to do with, obviously, farmers putting down traps because harvest mice are very detrimental to well the harvest they live and they use it the cats are scratching at my door because i shut the door so that no noise from downstairs didn't come upstairs so they're scratching at the door right now i think actually it might be wolf so i have to let let them in I'll just No, Wolf, we're not playing this game. Look, I've got your toy here. What's this? What's this? You want it? Fetch. Go on then. Goodbye then. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, yeah, I went to the door and he's literally just looking at me like, Mum, you're not going to come downstairs with me? And I'm like, um, no. And then I was like, you're going to come chase your toy. I'll throw it to this side of the room so I can shut the door behind you. And he's like, um, no, I think I'm going to stay downstairs with Papa. And then now he's just, I've just heard him come back up the stairs and he's probably going to start scratching at the door again in a minute. But I'm going to ignore him because he's not coming in. It's like, he's not choosing to come in. I'm not, not letting him come in. <laughs> but yeah, so harvest mice are endangered. And obviously they are detrimental to a lot of farmers' crops. They will use it as like a source of food and obviously with the technologies we have now a lot of like when we're plowing fields potentially a lot of harvest mice nests and such can get damaged and then obviously we do put a lot of traps out for them and i think over time that's just led to them 
and numbers dwindling because surprisingly i found this out today uh, yesterday harvest mice when they're in a group there's only really two breeding so the, they have an alpha male and an alpha female and they're the only two that will breed and then the alpha female will basically like dominate the others and like you're not allowed to have babies sort of thing only i'm allowed to have babies so in the wild when if they live in big groups there's not actually that many of them producing babies so they don't actually whilst they do repopulate quickly at a fast number there's only two people two of them doing that so it's not as efficient as if they were all in their own little groups so yeah so we did breed some i don't know if we did a soft release into the wild i think most of the mouse we since we've bred have been donated to other educational institutions however i do i did one of my tutors did comment that they breed mice to soft release them back in the wild now soft releasing in terms of releasing like endangered animals which is um basically when you set up sort of an enclosure in your garden or in a space that the animal has access into so they can still be they're still fed and watered in that space but they have the freedom to go out and explore and eventually they migrate away from that enclosure and you know find a kind of settle down somewhere else and find a new home but um yeah so that's a soft release i think a hard release is just when you let them go and you don't really and that's it you don't do anything um normally hard release is good if you're doing it with like an animal that's been taken from the wild because it was injured you've recut it's healed it and now it's going back into the wild it's difficult with breeding animals because sometimes because you've bred them they're familiar around you so they're less you just gotta be careful when breeding animals with the intention of releasing them for repopulation um and obviously do not just you should never just release animals back to the wild if you're breeding them unless one they are a native species if you're like breeding snakes and then no one's buying the snakes and then you release them you're actually introducing an invasive species which can then damage you know the natural habitats and wildlife within the local area so there is legislation in place and i don't know if if you're planning on breeding animals like harvest mice if you need a license of some sort i didn't really ask those questions maybe i should have but yeah i think that's actually really cool i'm very interested in conservation and the impact of invasive species on the environment wolf there we go sorry he's just doing it again but i know that if i go to the door he's not going to actually want to come in he wants me to go to him and i just want to sit and dive in paint for a bit is that too much to ask so yeah so last week that was what i did and then friday i went to work experience saturday and sunday i didn't do anything i played video games all day saturday i did my house chores sunday i did lots of clothes washing um i changed the bed in yada yada so yeah just generic chores around the house okay now he's whining let me try again to let him in I've left the door open a smidge so he can kind of squeeze through if he wants to come in. Um, I don't like that because then I can hear Ori and Ori can hear me and I don't like that. But oh well. <laughs> Not because I don't like hearing him but because I'm recording and that makes me awkward. Um, so yeah, so then Monday and Tuesday was just... There, he's in the room now. Hello, Wolfin. Hello, baby. Oh, he's running off again. He's just being a crazy lunatic. Anyway, so Monday and Tuesdays, we do a lot of heavy, like, 
learning wise with like in the classrooms all day um we did we had breeding genetics both we had breeding genetics both days monday morning we had boarding and then tuesday we had like tutorials and stuff in the morning and tuesday was a hard day because we actually <coughs> wolf <coughs> enough Enough! Stop it, baby! Come here! Come here! Come here! Are you wolfing? I got you! I got you! I'm gonna cuddle! I'm gonna cuddle you! Here you go! Oh, that's my nose! Don't eat my nose! Okay, I got you! You wanna stay here? Are you gonna stay here? Or do you wanna go? No barking, please. Please don't bark. Oh, good boy. No, you don't. Okay, okay, okay. You don't want to. You don't want to sit with Mama. Okay, bye bye then. It's just difficult because <laughs> when the windows are open, obviously, and like the kids are running around outside, and there's other dogs potentially running around in their gardens and such he's like i'm gonna bark at them because i don't like noises <laughs> so he barks at everything absolutely everything outside and sometimes it's really hard to get him to stop so we kind of give him a firm, like stern voice and say enough sometimes that will sometimes that stops him like i can hit ducks or some but not ducks that was really stupid ducks i don't have any like bodies of water near me but we have birds I like we do actually have a river nearby but i'm hearing birds squawking outside and he's probably heard that too and he's gone wah, wah, wah. so yeah so tuesday was difficult because we had a very like we had to watch this documentary that was very distressing especially for someone so emotionally sensitive as me about like pedigree dog breeding and like the harm it can do to dogs and stuff i found that little drill that loose that drill i'll just pop it there and um yeah it was very sad um especially when i i connect better with animals than i do humans because i um obviously i have a struggle socially like this video is just actually quite difficult for me um but i also like the ability to just ramble and talk about whatever i need to talk about and you can either watch it or listen to it or skip it and that just makes it a-okay with me um so yeah so tuesday monday very assignment like work heavy like very sad topics but we have to do them so we got through them and then i had a friend stay over tuesday after college because we didn't do any we didn't have any lessons wednesday so they came over and we went out to the local board game cafe and played board games with another friend who actually works at the cafe but they weren't working that night obviously and then, oh, that's got a lot of holes in it. Let me just move that. It's a bit of a trash drill, that one was. And then they spent the day, Wednesday, they were playing a game on the Xbox because I'm not good with people. <laughs> so even if I want people around, I'd rather we sit in silence, do our own thing and just chill. And then, you know, and if we need, like, we want to talk about something, then we can talk. So they played their game and I played my game and we played them side by side and yeah, it was it was nice. It was just a nice day. Um the minute I'm and then to Thursday obviously I come in, I had practical. That day I actually did health checks on a, the Euromastix, who is a feisty boy. <laughs> he is very feisty. So we have a Euromastix and he's a lizard. So they're a lizard. And they have a very big tail that's very spiky. It has little spikes on the tail. So when we handled, I know spikes are sharp. Like they could, they would cut you if, like you know, he swiped at you, which is what they're for. They are his defensive mechanism, and in the wild, he it would be what would protect him from predators. So obviously, when he's we're trying to get him out of the enclosure to put him in a rub, so we can do the health checks to make sure that everything's okay is okay with him, and. He's not happy with that. He's whacking his tail at us 
obviously the person collecting him i'm holding the rub and then my friend is collecting him um because there's a like we have to wear these very thick leather gloves so that if he hits us it doesn't injure us so obviously we did that and we got him eventually but it was very difficult and i imagine very stressful for him and for us i do i hate it when we are having to pick up the animals and distress them but we also need to do it just to make sure they're okay and that they're healthy and to be fair with the Euromastics, he does actually have his little sore on his chin i think from where he um potentially has been running around his enclosure and i think he's maybe caught some scales on his chin and actually pulled them out so um yeah we just had to we put some like treatment on it and gave it a wash because so we think someone's put the wrong substrate in with him so it's very rare he's very he's buried he's just like he is a green like a vibrant green um and like yellowy lizard and he is in dark colors on the underside and he is red because his substrate is like all over him <laughs> so yeah i think his substrate does need changing but yeah so we got him out and he actually bit a friend my friend who had the gloves on he bit her finger luckily it was in the glove but he was he had that strong of a grip that he bit and held on to her and she was like ah, like trying to get him off the finger and when we did get him off she took the gloves off and she had little indents so she he didn't break skin so she didn't bleed but you know when like he kind of traps like you push down and it like has like a little indent for a bit he she had that on her finger and then the glove that we took off actually had a nice little triangle shape from where his mouth had latched on so you could actually see the outline of his mouth like the line like the shape of it and obviously at the time we, we were like oh no he bit i think it's slightly funny but then she was like oh, i'm not picking him up anymore it's your turn and then gave me the gloves and i was like oh no um but my issue um, i was lucky because my hands are actually slightly too small for those gloves so my fingers don't reach all the way to the end i have enough fingers in there to be able to like use the gloves and hold on to the animal safely but not enough to like if you were to bite it it would grip me so i was lucky in that sense i have small hands um so yeah so then obviously i had to pick him up again and hold him in place while we applied the treatment to him and then we left him in his little rub for a bit just so that for the treatment to dry because what we didn't want to do was apply this treatment and then he go in the substrate and the substrate gets stuck to the treatment sort of thing and or rub off so we let the treatment dry it was just an iodine solution nothing too crazy and then once that had cleared up once um, we we'd give him about enough time for that to dry we put him back in his enclosure and he was a very happy boy to be back in his little space he was like don't ever pick me up again but for some of them we don't do the health checks regularly because it is distressing um and obviously this is we're still in the start of the term so obviously over the summer they only have like one technician in or two technicians and i think it's two technicians a day on the weekdays and then on the weekends they have like one in i think um i'm not sure the schematic like semantics of the rotary system for the college technicians um and yeah so obviously this was the first like week of the school year that someone had handled him and we had to make sure that we had like an outline for his health checks to compare to for the rest of the year so now we know how much he weighs and how much like his behavior like whether his, is his behavior distressing and obviously based on the fact that he's not handled regularly and that he is a little feisty boy the fact that he is thrashing his tail and attacking like biting is not a bad thing it's not we're not sitting there going he's showing abnormal behaviors he's not he's showing natural behaviors for his species and in his state of mind can you stop playing with that bottle it is a very noisy bottle okay wolf loves plastic bottles absolutely adores them he loves to try and he gets the lid off oh there's cat mail um like the shed of the cat mail um so he yeah he will uh sit there and chew at the bottle get the lid off and then if there's any liquid still inside he'll kind of try and lick that out which there's not that much liquid inside that bottle so it's not too much of an issue but yeah 
so that was my lesson yesterday and it was very eventful and it was very fun i i like working with some of the more exotic animals some of the ones i might not have experience with before um but from next week onwards i will be one week with the sugar gliders one week with the bull python and it will rotate like that until the end of our unit and then obviously after christmas we will still have practical but it'll probably be a bit more helping out the technicians like doing health checks like cleaning the enclosures uh feeding the animals that sort of things um yeah so yeah that's that's my college week at least well that's my actual week and then today um i'm meant to be at work experience uh, but i am actually so <laughs> i've been sent in all these stories in like a really positive light but i obviously do struggle with mental health i have severe, quite a bad mental health um i think it's moderate to severe in the eyes of the doctors i don't know <laughs> i don't really know how to describe it i have depression and anxiety and i am awaiting a diagnosis for autism so i struggle um i struggle especially at college where a lot of the time i am masking and hiding like some of my like you know more weird weird uh personality traits that people don't really just you know and don't really want to don't feel comfortable in a place like that where i can't even wear certain clothes because i'm a bit too big for them and people take the piss out of them so yeah um so it's been stressful for me so i was meant to be at work experience today but i just gave them a call this morning and was like i'm really struggling and i i think i just need the weekend to like reset and i um said obviously when i when i'm in next week i'll like have a talk with you and we can like discuss like further like why i felt this way and stuff like that and they're really nice there like she's really really nice and they were understanding and I'm only at the beginning of the school year and it's not too distressing if I take off a day now. Obviously, if it becomes a regular thing, then potentially I'm, I risk not having all my hours done. But I am going to not make it a regular thing because it's not it's not something I want to miss out. It's not, the, it's not an experience I want to miss out on. And I... Yeah... So obviously, this right now, I'm struggling to pick stuff up. Obviously, I'm trying to be optimistic for the video. But yeah. And then, like, my diamond painting is my go-to, like, de-stressor when I'm in situations like this. So I was like, I'm going to diamond paint anyway. So why not try to get out a small video? I don't know how long this has been. But yeah, just try and get out a video. Um, Seeing so, so, you know, as I do, kind of want to keep up with them weekly, so yeah but it's nearly the end of september and i'm looking forward to the next month i have my birthday in october so i turn 25 this year and then i said that as if i was confused about which age i was turning now i do turn 25 this year and then it's my little brother's birthday as well and my older sister's birthday all within the same month all within so my sister's birthday is 10 days after mine and then my brother is three days after hers so i'm the 13th she's the 23rd and he is the 26th of october and then obviously we have halloween which is spooky season and i'm hoping to maybe i don't think i'm gonna be out for halloween this year so i will hopefully i might buy a bit of a little bit of sweets put some and leave the lights on and then if anyone does trick-or-treating i can you know but that's also difficult with Wolf because I do have a stress, like an anxious dog who doesn't like people knocking on the door. So, yeah, maybe it's something to consider. Or, like, do it through the window so he doesn't get... I don't know. We don't really get many trick-or-treaters to our end of the, like, uh, building estate anyway. Um, it's still a new build area, so a lot of the houses are only just moved in and some of the people don't have kids or... They don't bring them this far out because we're like, like right towards the end of it. So yeah, um, yeah, I'm excited though. I love Halloween. Absolutely love it. I'm definitely glad that the weather's cooling down though because I struggle a lot in the heat and I'm glad for the cold, but I'm now not glad for the rain because I don't actually have a proper coat. So I think that's something I'm going to have to remedy this month or 
at some point just because I I don't mind walking home in the rain but I'm walking home in the rain in like one layer of clothing and it's it, it's cold and it might be why I'm constantly nervously because I'm like constantly got like a little cold or something from walking home in the rain but yeah so that's my week and that was like everything that's happened and then whoops have we got anything exciting going on? Sorry, I'll be honest. Um, well, because for, for my 25th, I'm planning on doing, like, a birthday dinner with my friends. And, like, we're going to be dressed up as Harry Potter characters if it all goes well. So this weekend, I need to sort out the invites for that. Like, I've invited people already. I told them the characters so that they can start preparing. But I wanted to make little digital, like, Hogwarts letters. I invited them to the dinner and stuff like that. So, yeah. I am looking forward to that and it will be good I'm hoping no. I just heard Ori going oh no because Wolf is doing something he's not supposed to be so yeah and then uh Ori has said that next month I can buy Pokemon the new Pokemon Scarlet Violet DLC well it's not new I think the first half has been out for a while and the second half is due to come out soon so I was like, oh, can I buy it, please? And he was like, yes. So we're just waiting for the month to tick over and for him to get paid so I can buy it. And I'm looking forward to that because I really enjoyed playing Scarlet and Violet. And I'm looking forward to playing the DLC too. Um, so yeah. But at the minute, my Scarlet Violet, everything's done. The only reason I play it now is like to breed shiny Pokemon. Like, because I don't really care about combat. I don't really go out of my way to fight other players often like unless i'm messing around with my friends or something so outside of the story and like you know collecting the poke the satisfaction of having a full pokedex the only reason i play it is to kind of get shiny pokemon in the like of the pokemon that i like the most so i obviously really like the i call chose skeldurge i can't say his name very well as my starter pokemon and i played him the whole time and i really like him and i was like you know what i definitely would like to get the shiny version of him because it's he's pink um he's a red like crocodile fire crocodile and his shiny version is a pink fire crocodile so i remember i bred him and i with a ditto with an actual shiny ditto and he's at like that someone gifted to me probably not a legit like not legitimately from the game but anyway <laughs> someone gifted me the shiny ditto after i went to bed read it and was like does anyone have like this that i can borrow to do the medusa method and he was like yeah i have one you can just keep it um so i was like oh okay cool thanks so i tried to use him to it's called the sorry not medusa masuda method so i'm trying after trying i tried to use him to do the masuda method which is actually it was originally the, a bug in the game that if you had a shiny Pokemon parent, I think I think it was a bug before. If I'm wrong and you're a Pokemon player, please correct me. But I think it was a bug in the game originally that meant that if you had a shiny parent ready and you were trying to breed for more shinies, then it would basically lead to the increase the odds of the child being a shiny. Um, and then obviously this, they turn it into like an aspect of the game. And I think the Masuda is the guy that come up with the thing. I'm not sure. Uh, the full details. Uh, there's definitely information on the internet about it though. So if you're interested, check it out. So yeah. Um, so yeah, I was trying to breed my skull doge. And I've, so far I've not had any luck, but I do still have like a lot of eggs for him. But it's just obviously running around and hatching all the eggs, and he get pretty tired. Hey, hey, hey. I already got ready just thinking about it. And no, I'm joking. I'm just really tired. This is another reason my mental health's not doing okay. Is I am shattered, and I don't really know why. And it affects me, you know. So yeah. Uh, so what have I done this week? Like, what have I watched? What have I read? Um, I think potentially after last week's video, I think I might have read a bit more of the Harry Potter audiobook. I'll read it, listen to a bit more of the audiobook whilst I did some diamond painting. Because I think I did most of this section like over the weekend. And then 
I haven't really watched TV, or obviously always been a bit too busy to watch Vampire Diaries with. And I don't really have anything else. I did watch when my friend stayed over, actually I lied, we watched that Elemental movie, which I thought was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. I cried. I, bet I am an emotionally sensitive soul. So I cried a lot. I cry at everything. Happy, sad, emotions. Emotions just overwhelm me. So yeah, that was full. that was a good film. And if you say otherwise, I'll cry. <laughs> but no, I enjoyed it, and I'm looking. For, I have a few other things on my watch list that I should maybe will try and watch this weekend. Uh, but yeah, so I haven't read anything outside of fan fiction because I am a geek and I do really enjoy fan fiction. Um, and and a lot of people when they hear fan fiction, I think, oh, they're just reading like the smutty stuff, you know, and the saucy stuff between characters. Um, no, I'm not into that, but I enjoy, I enjoy people using the characters and making, like, unique scenarios that might drift from the book. Or sometimes people resolving things from the book that you might not have liked, and then, or films, and they kind of make them their own, and I like that. I do, I really do, so I do spend a lot of my time reading it, and... I try to balance out between listening to published books and supporting writers to also reading fan fiction and like just you know giving like leaving comments and likes and just making people feel appreciated because I genuinely like to think that people who write fan fiction and people who write fan fiction well if given support from their readers will go on to publish their own stories unique and individual and they all do well so yeah, yeah, I am definitely a reader more than I'm a writer though, so don't ever ask me to write you anything. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, that's all I've done really, it's just like kind of chilled. It's been coming home a lot and just kind of dying in my bed of tiredness. Um, coming home, having dinner, sleeping, well, I'm out like a light sort of thing. Um, but yeah, and then what else was there? I did have play, been playing my little Let's Build a Zoo game. So it's a little indie game. I don't know if I spoke about it much last week. If I did, then I'm just going to repeat myself, so I'm sorry. And it's basically you run a zoo and you have to trade with other zoos. Sorry if the zoo sounds funny, I do have a speech impediment. But yeah, you have to trade with other zoos to get um, new animals. And then once you have those new animals, you actually have to breed them to get specific variations and there's 10 variations for each animal and obviously sometimes it's like different positions depending on animals so for example the polar bear normally you just kind of get bigger smaller some sitting some standing sort of thing but with the actual bears you get a bit more variation so you get like sloth bears brown bears black bears um they don't call them those but you can tell by the image that that's a sun bear or that's a sloth bear or well, that's a black bear, or that's a brown bear sort of thing, so yeah. So each animal has its own variations, and you breed them, and towards the end, though, when you're just trying to breed, because you've done everything else, and you, like, you're just achievement hunting at this point, which is what I was, I'm doing, um, and you're just trying to breed everything, you just have everything on triple time, um, because sometimes it takes, like, a few in-game days to, like, get a successful breed, of the animal variant that you want and yeah so i finished that actually not last night the night before i finished the base game and there is some dlc and one of the dlc is the dinosaur island and that one is slightly different you don't have to breed different variations and you don't trade with other zoos you actually send people to dig sites and then they get the bones and then you clone them and then they breed and then yeah so obviously I have some dinosaurs in my zoo and then they have a new DLC which is an aquatic DLC which is obviously like sea animals and fish and sharks and whales and stuff like that. So that one I haven't played yet so I'm going to complete the dinosaur DLC, complete the achievements for it, get all the animals, blah de blah de blah and then I'll go on to that one and then once it's done and I've completed every single DLC and every single achievement and actually completed the game it will be uninstalled and never to be touched again until another DLC comes out. If another DLC ever comes out. Which I kind of hope they don't because it is a, 
it is a tedious game like the micromanagement in that game is a lot and it's not necessarily very well done um but i won't go into too much detail about it it has its ups it has its down mm, yeah and that's it but i don't know if there's anything else really for more for me to say so obviously because i've spent a lot today talking about animals i am an animal management student if you liked the video then or you listened all the way to this point then just leave some emojis in the comments with your favorite animal if your like mobile phone provider has that animal or just write what your favorite animal is um and yeah so thank you for watching as long as you have and i hope you have a great weekend and then a great week and i will see you next week okay bye